Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be covering what is software development lifecycle, what is waterfall model and agile model, advantages and disadvantages of agile model, 12 principles of agile software development, and also I'll explain difference between agile model and waterfall model. Guys, I have uploaded a complete DevOps subject tutorials. I'll provide that link in description. You can watch from there. If you are watching this video for the first time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. At first, I'll listen what is software development lifecycle. Guys, we also call this software development lifecycle as software development process. Process is nothing but sequence of steps followed by software company in order to develop high quality software is known as process. So software development lifecycle is a process used by software industry or software companies in order to design, develop and test high quality softwares. The main aim of software development lifecycle is to produce high quality software. The software must reach customer expectations and the software must complete within short time with less cost. If you want to develop any high quality software, then without using any software development lifecycle, you cannot develop high quality software. For example, whenever any team is developing software, then they must clearly understand what to do and when to do. If they don't know what to do and when to do, then they cannot develop high quality software and their project may get failure. So software development lifecycle contains complete steps from starting to till the end and these steps are in disciplined and systematic manner. So by following these steps, we can easily develop high quality software. This is complete software development lifecycle. By following this process, that is by following these steps, we can develop high quality software. This first step is requirement gathering and analysis and next step is design and after that implementation or coding and next step is testing, next to deployment and maintenance. I will explain all these steps one by one in detail. First one is requirement gathering and analysis. Guys, in each and every software company, there will be a business analyst or project manager. What they will do is, they will communicate with clients. Clients are nothing but people who want software. They are clients. For example, I am college owner. I want one college application. So here I act as client. So I'll go to software company and then I will meet this business analyst or project manager. And then I will ask them to create one good quality software for my college. And then I will tell about my requirements like my college software must contain both login forms for student and faculty and the software must display attendance of student and faculty and then the software must display marks of students and it should display complete faculty details and so on. So I'll tell all my requirements to this business analyst. Whenever I tell my requirements, this business analyst will note my requirements in what document. The document name is business requirement specification document. So after finalizing this business requirement specification document, they will create another document. The document name is software requirement specification document. Shortly we call it as SRS. This SRS document contains complete information about project like what are the softwares required to develop this project and what are hardware requirements, like how much time it will take to complete this project, how many developers required, cost of the project and so on. So they will mention all this in SRS document. In requirement gathering and analysis phase, they will create BRS document, they will create SRS document. This is all about requirement gathering and analysis phase. Next one is design phase. After completion of requirement gathering and analysis phase, in software company, designers will create one blueprint. Blueprint is nothing but diagram. So by seeing that blueprint, we can clearly understand that how our software look like after implementation. For example, if you consider house construction, before constructing house, builder will show you one blueprint. So by seeing that blueprint, you can clearly understand that how our house will look like after construction. So in same way, before actually creating any software, designers will create one blueprint. By seeing that blueprint, we can clearly understand how our software look like after implementation. This design phase contains two steps. They are high level design and low level design. High level design means it will display complete software architecture. And whereas low level design will describe how each and every future should work in the software. For example, in college software, there is login form. So login form is considered as one future. Student login form is considered as one future. Faculty login form is considered as another future. And student attendance is considered as one future. Like that, it will describe how each future should work. Third phase is implementation or coding phase. By seeing blueprint, software developers will start developing code. This is one of the longest phase in software development lifecycle. It will consume a lot of time to develop code. This phase contains front end middleware and backend where frontend is nothing but by using which programming language they are developing code like java c++ python so on and backend is nothing but which database they are using 
like Oracle, MySQL and so on. And whereas middleware is software that will connect this both frontend and backend. This is all about implementation or coding phase. And fourth phase is testing phase. In testing phase, software testers will take code from software developers and then they will start testing that code, whether that code is working correctly or not. And fifth phase is deployment phase. Once after successfully completion of testing, deployment engineer will place their software in one server. So all users can access their software. This is deployment phase. And last one is maintenance phase. Even after successfully releasing our software, we need to provide support. That is, if there are any bugs, we need to fix that bugs. And if you want any updates, we can provide updates. So this comes under maintenance phase. Next, I'll explain what is waterfall model. This waterfall model is one of the easiest and traditional model. And this waterfall model is suitable only for small size projects. It is not suitable for large size projects. And these are various stages in waterfall model. Same stages I already explained before in software development lifecycle. Guys, in waterfall model, only after completion of first phase, we'll go to next phase. For example, only after completion of requirement gathering, we'll go to design phase. Similarly, after design phase, development phase, after the testing phase, and next to deployment phase and maintenance phase. So in waterfall model, only after completion of first phase, we'll go to next phase. For example, I'm in testing phase and I want to perform some changes in development phase. If you are in testing phase, we cannot go back to this development phase. For example, I'm in development phase. Now I want to perform some changes in design phase. So if you are in development phase, we cannot go back to this design phase. If you see these arrow marks, all these are flowing only downward direction like waterfall. So that is why we call it as waterfall model. It will only flow in downward direction. The waterfall model is universally accepted software development lifecycle model. In this method, the whole process of software development is divided into various phases. I already said before, the development in the waterfall model is seen as flowing steadily downward like a waterfall as it is a continuous software development model. Guys, these are some of the important points that you need to remember in this waterfall model. And the first point is waterfall model is not suitable to develop large scale projects. It is suitable only for small size projects. And next one is the requirements in the waterfall model should be clear cut at the beginning time. You need to give all requirements of the project at the beginning. We cannot add any requirements in the middle. So you need to give all requirements at the beginning. If you don't give requirements at the beginning, we cannot develop efficient software. In the waterfall model, it is hard to move back in order to make changes in the previous phase. We cannot go back to previous phase in order to make any changes. The testing process in waterfall model starts after completion of development. So we can find a lot of bugs in testing phase. This is all about waterfall model. Next selection, what is use of agile model? Agile is an iterative and incremental approach. Iterative is nothing but repeating same process again and again. That is repeating requirement gathering, designing, coding, testing again and again. This is iterative approach. Incremental approach is nothing but initially we will create one software with very basic features and then we will keep on adding new features to the same software. This is incremental approach. I will give an example. Yes, for example, I'm college owner. I want to create one college software by using this waterfall model, not agile model, waterfall model. So initially in requirement gathering phase, I said features like I want college software, the software must contain student login and as well as faculty login and the software must contain student attendance details. So the software company developed that software by using waterfall model. So after software development, again, I said that I want new future like it should display result of the student. So after creating software, it is impossible to add new features. We cannot perform any major changes to that particular software using waterfall model. In order to overcome this problem, many software companies are using agile model. In agile model, they will create software with very basic features. For example, I said, I want student login form in that software and I want faculty login form in that software and I want student attendance details in the software. So in the software, Student login and faculty login is very important. So in agile model, initially they will develop software with very basic features and they will keep on adding new features. For example, they created student login form and as well as faculty login form and as well as student attendance details. So again, I said that I want to display student results in this particular software. So easily they can add new features to that particular software. This is major difference between waterfall model and agile model. So agile model is an iterative and incremental approach. Iterative is nothing but Whenever we get any new future, we need to repeat these steps. And whereas incremental approach is nothing but initially we will create software with very basic features and then we will keep on adding new features to that same software. So this is diagram. 
it will run like a loop for example for first future it will plan design develop test deploy review and then it will launch and similarly again for new features again plan design develop test deploy review and launch so this is iterative process in agile process we will deliver piece of software with few functionalities and later on we will keep on adding new functionalities to that same software so there is no need of customer to wait long time until entire software is developed so there is no need of customers to develop long time until entire software is developed agile is a process that follows concept of agile manifesto held in february 2001 get this agile manifesto is nothing but it is a book that contains 12 principles software companies must follow these 12 principles in order to develop high quality software and the first principle is highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuously delivery of valuable software in this agile manifesto first principle is to satisfy customers how we can satisfy any customer we should deliver software very fast and then we need to add new features continuously to the same software and next principle is allows customers to change requirements even late in development for example first time i said only i want student login form next time i said that i want both student login form and as well as faculty login form so this agile model allows customers to change requirements and third principle is deliver working software frequently within a short period of time that is from couple of weeks to couple of months guys within short period of time that is maximum within 2 to 4 weeks we need to deliver software and fourth principle is business people developers and testers must work togetherly daily throughout the project so these people must communicate each other daily so they can deliver software within very short time the agile principle is about to having faith in your team and helping them to do their best work it's like giving them tools and encouraging them to success instead of continuously watching over their shoulders guys in this agile model product manager will not force employees he will give freedom to work so that is why developers and testers can easily work and they can complete software within time and sixth principle is face to face conversation with your team all employees like business people developers testers they will conduct face to face meetings and seventh principle is working software is the primary measure they must deliver working software and eighth future is agile process promote sustainable development that is nothing but continuous development and ninth one is technical excellence development team must work continuously and they must deliver high quality software and the software must reach customer expectations tenth one is simplicity simplicity is nothing but they must focus only on important tasks and they must avoid unnecessary work so they can achieve their goals faster and eleventh one is self organizing team here in agile model manager will not guide you team members must communicate each other and they must complete their work and last twelfth principle is adjustments immediately whenever customer give any changes immediately company must suggest their plan based on that particular information for example immediately customer said that he want to add staff information in that particular page immediately company must perform that work these are 12 principles in agile manifesto these are 12 principles in agile manifesto guys all these principles are advantages and these are disadvantages in agile model first disadvantage is less documentation whereas if you consider waterfall model they will do complete documentation but whereas in agile model documentation is very less and next disadvantage is team must be knowledgeable whenever customer give any new feature then team must immediately update that new feature in that existing software so if team members don't have any knowledge it is impossible to develop software and next disadvantage is the project can easily get taken off track if customer is not satisfied after developing complete software if customer is not satisfied then they need to start work from the beginning because customer satisfaction is highest priority in agile model so if customer don't like the software company will simply throw out the software 